The Underground Railroad, despite its misleading name, operated as a secret network of routes and safe houses for escaping slaves. It was an illegal operation, as the Fugitive Slave Act required citizens to assist slave owners in recovering their property. Abolitionists played a crucial role in supporting the system, providing hiding places, transportation, and even identity papers for escaped slaves. Some brave black conductors even ventured into plantations to recruit and guide slaves to freedom. Slaves escaping via the Underground Railroad often traveled in small groups, covering short distances each night. The deep southern states had fewer successful escapes compared to states closer to the Ohio River. The routes were intentionally complex to confuse pursuers, with escaping slaves moving from station to station at night, sometimes alone or accompanied by a conductor. The journey was dangerous, and many slaves left their families behind in hopes of gaining their own freedom and eventually buying their families' freedom. The ultimate destination for escaped slaves was the United States-Canadian border. During the time of the Underground Railroad, there was also a dark side known as the Reverse Underground Railroad. This sinister network involved the kidnapping of free blacks and their transportation to the Deep South to be sold as slaves. Kidnapping gangs, known as Blackbirders, operated in cities like New York and Philadelphia, using tactics like luring victims with alcohol or tempting children with fruit and candy. The Reverse Underground Railroad even extended into the slave states, where slaves traveling with passes were kidnapped and moved to secret stations. William Still, known as the father of the Underground Railroad, was born in New Jersey to a former slave who had bought his freedom. Despite being born in free New Jersey, Still and his siblings were considered slaves under federal law. Settling in Philadelphia, Still worked for the Pennsylvania Society for the Abolition of Slavery and is credited with sheltering and moving up to 800 slaves towards freedom in Canada. He kept meticulous records of his activities and maintained contacts with stationmasters along the routes to assist in locating family members later. Harriet Tubman was one of the conductors who moved escaping slaves through Still Station, and he was supported by Philadelphia abolitionists and Quaker congregations in his efforts. Still worked as both a stationmaster and a conductor, moving as many as 60 slaves per month through the multiple routes he knew. He was never caught by slave catchers and went on to become a successful businessman and philanthropist in Philadelphia. Thomas Garrett, a stationmaster on the Underground Railroad in Delaware, openly sheltered and assisted escaped slaves on their journey north. He was often relied upon by conductor Harriet Tubman and financially supported her. John Hunn, a fellow Quaker and farmer, coordinated all the Underground Railroad stations in Delaware, including Garrett's. Both men faced legal action and heavy fines for their involvement in helping escaped slaves, but continued their efforts despite the threats. Garrett claimed to have helped around 2,700 escaped slaves during his time operating the station. The Ohio River served as a boundary between slave states and free states, with towns on both sides playing a crucial role in the Underground Railroad. In Ripley, Ohio, Presbyterian minister John Rankin faced constant visits from slave owners and catchers, prompting him to move his family to a new home on a hill. From there, Rankin would signal slaves across the river when it was safe to cross, and they would travel north through Ohio on hidden roads and paths, often facing opposition from whites and the fugitive slave law. The routes through Ohio spanned over 3,000 miles and led to towns along Lake Erie, with some escaped slaves eventually returning to the United States after slavery was abolished. Harriet Tubman, born a slave in Maryland, experienced a difficult childhood filled with beatings and limited education. Sustaining a head injury that caused lifelong seizures, Tubman married and began calling herself Harriet. She escaped slavery and became a conductor on the Underground Railroad, guiding escaping slaves to freedom and making about a dozen trips over the years. Despite myths surrounding her capture, Tubman's last trip as a conductor ended in December 1860. Charles Torrey, a Congregational minister, joined the abolitionist movement in the 1830s and later established the new movement, which became the Liberty Party. In Washington, D.C., Torrey worked undercover as a reporter while secretly helping slaves escape through an elaborate route to Albany, New York. 
Despite his efforts to free over 400 slaves, Tory was arrested in Baltimore in 1844 and died in prison two years later. Most escaping slaves entered Indiana by crossing the Ohio River from Kentucky, with a few coming from Ohio. They traveled through the state at night and sought shelter in safe houses during the day. Indiana had violent clashes between slave catchers and abolitionists, prompting the legislature and governors to crack down on underground railroad activities, but they were unsuccessful in shutting down the system. After Mexico banned slavery in 1829, the Texas Revolution was triggered, leading to Texas becoming a slave state. American slave owners tried to recover fugitive slaves in Mexico, but the Mexican government refused to cooperate. As a result, an underground railroad developed in Texas, allowing many slaves to escape to Mexico with the help of safe houses and guides. Mexico actively assisted in the escape of these slaves, while the southern states debated actions against the Mexican government for providing them with safe haven. In order to support the Underground Railroad, vigilance committees were established in larger northern cities and the West. These committees raised funds for operations and helped escaped slaves settle in free states. After the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 was passed, the focus of many committees shifted to thwarting slave catchers and creating public awareness of the kidnapping of free blacks. Despite breaking federal law, the vigilance committees continued their work, even in the face of arrests and the Supreme Court upholding laws in favor of slave owners. <laughs>